Hello and welcome to Nana Yoga. My name is Nanako and I'm a yoga teacher in Miyoko, Japan. So today's class is um, something that um, is quite personal and I hope that it helps you too. Um, so I'm quite a beginner in snowboarding and skiing. I only started when I was about like I did it a few times as a kid, but I didn't really get very far. My teacher was a snowboarder, my <laughs> my stepfather's niece, and um, and I got into skiing. And my friends were much better than me. This was in uh, Grenoble des Alpes, and um, I got pushed a lot. But I remember a lot having that fear. So being on top of a steep slope and just being like. I think at that time I couldn't even put my brain and my heart together, both my brain and my heart were like, no, fear, flight, fight or fly, and it was just like, just like fight and fly, and I couldn't fly, because um, I was stuck on top of the mountain. So, <laughs> so um, another incident, um, also when you are actually much more um, advanced in snowboarding or skiing, you might still um, find yourself in trouble. I mean, mother nature is, um, she's a, She's badass, she's pretty strong. So, um, and she doesn't care how good you are. And um, I still get the fear, and essentially you get this fear because um, it's your, how would you say this? Your, your body and your mind are telling you, oh, this is scary, you should survive, uh, you shouldn't die, and uh, just, no. So that's why a lot of the time it's really difficult for us um, as we get older to do things that are out of our comfort zone because we just, I don't I, I guess through conditioning we just create a lot of fear. So, uh, another personal story and is that uh, two seasons ago uh, my confidence level went really high. I went from kind of going off on the piece to actually following my husband who's much better snowboarder than me so far and um, I followed him and I got really confident he kind of you know helped me out and led me the way and if I know where I'm going if I do a few times I'm quite confident but uh, if I'm going somewhere new I'm still a little bit like apprehensive and maybe that's being a woman and watching out for my self and touch wood this wood right here um, I have been fine however uh, in spring about not last season, the season before, so two years ago, I did fall into a glide crack. And a glide crack in springtime happens, especially in Japan, in Miyoko, we have hot springs. So the earth is incredibly warm. So what happens is that when it is also warm on top, this snow sli sort of slides. And it here, it's not so steep like in Canada or Europe or North America or steep mount steeper mountains. Um, it just kind of slides down and makes a huge crack. And this crack, was maybe a little bit taller than me. I'm not that tall, I'm like one meter 55. So it was probably about under, just under two meters and a meter and a half, so it's in between. And um, I thought, oh, I'll take that line. There was fresh sort of spring powder. This was in Seki Onsen, this really cool um, ski resort, which I would highly recommend for you to visit if you come to Miyoko, Miyoko Kogan, whatever you want to call it. And um, I fell in and I saw it, I saw, no lines, which is one, an indication that you should probably not go there. And number two, I probably should have watched where I was going down while I was on the lift because you could actually see this area. And um, I saw it, I saw this huge crack. I thought, oh, well, that's pretty, I don't wanna fall in there. And I hadn't jumped over it because um, I guess I didn't have the level. And I went around and actually ended up um, the snow is awfully soft because you know there's a crack and there's snow here which has opened up and I fell head first I had a helmet on I had walkie-talkie and I have my mobile but neither of my friends with the walkie-talkies had them on and my other half did not have his phone or walkie-talkie on so I was pretty um, screwed and uh, luckily one of the ski um, resort guys helped me and um, he was pretty freaked out. He was a uh, bibitteru, as you say in Japanese, because um, someone actually died there like 13 years ago. But anyway, I'm fine. But um, like many things that happened to us, it kind of traumatized me. I laughed it off, um, but the year after I went to the ski resort only once um, this season, and um, I don't know what happened. Well, already my riding was a bit more rubbish, and then, um, yeah, and 
I just had this thing in my heart that was like, it was pounding. My brain did not correlate the feeling of what was my body. This is what's really interesting once you learn more about yoga and meditation and so on, is you kind of start to think like, oh, I feel like this, but my brain doesn't quite understand. So what happened is that I have, I, it caused trauma and it was obviously in my brain and my body kind of started to be like, what are you doing? Why are you here again? Do you want to die? And my heart was pounding and then I kind of pushed myself to do a few runs that I can do, but I had this fear from falling in the sky crack. It really scared me because I thought, um, essentially I was fine in the crack, but if had someone had snowboarded or skied above me and thrown the sort of fresh snow above me, I could have suffocated. I was upside down. My shoulder was stuck. All I had was luckily this access. So, um, so it was scary and I also had um I had um oh god what is it called like a beeper thing on sorry and uh <laughs> but um yeah so um I remember being on the slope and it was felt like it was steep but looking back on the video now it was not that steep and I could not go I could not do this run and I went straight back to that time where I was like a complete beginner at skiing and I'm like okay, you can do it in my brain and my heart and my body is just like, it won't move. And then I started to have tears. And then, um, you know, you normally start to realize that your breathing is really fast and um, it was not great. But eventually I think I just told myself it's fine. I made myself calm down. I did it, didn't look great, but I did it and I went down. Um, Another note, if you are, um, especially if you come to Japan and the powder can be incredibly deep if you're not used to it and the snow, especially Miyoko, is heavy. So I would advise that if you do get stuck, which it totally happens, luckily it's a very soft landing, but what happened is that you dig in and especially if you're a snowboarder, you're just digging further and then you have to, so what will happen is that you dig in and you need to just stay calm. Um, you do not want to start panicking because then you get sweaty and your breathing goes ca crazy and then your goggles will fog up and then you won't be able to see once you can get out of the situation. So just keep calm. So number one tip, when you are scared and on the mountain, keep calm, uh, breathe. So use what we'll be using in this video. So ujjayi breath, so breathing in through the nose, really deep and breathing out again. And just keep doing that until you finally feel a little calmer and your brain isn't going like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. <laughs> You're not gonna die, you'll be fine. Um, number two is that voice in your head that's saying, oh my God, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. Don't listen to it. It's trying to help you out in the sense that it's trying to get you out of the crappy situation, but it's actually making you panic more. So. The best thing to do is actually to be like, I'm fine. I will get out of this situation. And just repeat that. Just repeat something very, very positive. It honestly it makes a huge difference. When I've been stuck in snow, I've had to do this. And then had no um, sweat in my goggles. I've, I got out, it took a while. Um, and I made my way and I was fine. So, um, so that's my tip. So this is a sort of like a bit of breathing yoga and then a short sort of meditation at the end to get you um, confident again to get back on the mountain and then utilize what we've used in this yoga video and put it up there on the mountain whether you're a skier a snowboarder whether you're really good at park complete beginner or like an advanced backcountry person um, I think these are skills that will really benefit you and they have certainly helped me since I've learned more about yoga and meditation. So um, let's get started. Uh, we're just going to sit down and if it's a little cold just put a blanket on or socks on for now because we're not going to move for a little while especially because it's winter, <laughs> might be freezing. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do is bring our palms down. So you bring them up when you kind of want to bring up the tension, but today we're gonna to be calm and stay grounded. So um, we're gonna just stay in an easy seat in position. If your knees come up and you're a little stiff, who cares? As long as it's comfortable, that's good enough. So we're gonna sit nice and straight. Both hands are gonna be facing down and we're gonna close the eyes. And then you're gonna start breathing in and out through the nose. 
Another breath in and out through the nose. And on your next breath in, we're gonna breathe in much more deeply. So inhale through the nose deeply. And exhale again through the nose deeply. So next, to breathe, exhale. We're gonna bring both the middle and the index finger in the middle of your forehead, so kind of on your this sort of third eye chakra area. And you're gonna bring the thumb to the right nostril and then the ring finger is kind of gonna hang out. So what we're gonna do is, hold on, that ring finger's actually gonna <laughs> close on your nose. And we're gonna sit nice up, nice and straight, left hand down, and you're gonna open up, I'm just gonna show you, open up the right nostril and breathe in through the right. And we're gonna do this five times, so uh, I'll let you know when it's a full cycle. So breathing in through the right. And when you're finished with that breath, you're gonna close both nostrils. You're gonna hold for a few seconds here. And then you're gonna exhale through the left nostril. So inhaling through the left nostril. Close the left nostril and then open the right and breathe out through the right. So that's one full circle. So we'll do four more. So inhaling through the right. Close both nostrils. And exhale through the left. Inhaling through the left nostril. I'm just filming. I'll be a few more minutes. Inhaling through the left nostril. A yoga video. <laughs> through the right and close both nostrils and exhale through the left inhaling through the left nostril left nostril and open up the right and breathe it out through the right. And then close the right nostril and hold the breath here and then breathing out through the left. left nostril and you're going to close both nostrils and then breathing out through the right again breathing in from the right nostril close both nostrils hold the breath and then breathing out through the left nostril. Breathing in from the left. Closing both nostrils and then breathe out through the right. One more time, breathing in through the right. Closing both nostrils and breathing in from the left, breathing out, sorry, 